Hi, welcome to LessonsWithTroy.com. I'm Troy Bruning Meyer. Well, this is going to be volume number three of my Pedal Steel Basics series. And in this one, we're adding to what we've already learned in volumes one and volume two. And this lesson is going to be all about chords. I'm going to be showing you all kinds of different ways to play major, minors, and dominant seventh chords. And we're taking what we learned in volumes one and applied it in volume two. We're taking all that information and we're adding just a couple new things to it. So we're still doing the same, same string grabs that we did in Volumes 1 and Volume 2. So the same strings we're going to be grabbing and the same pedals we're using. We're just using the A and the B pedal, but we're adding one new thing to this. We're adding your left knee lever. Uh, left knee lever left and left knee lever right. Um, it's at least left knee lever for me. And I'll tell you what my, my uh, left knee levers do. My left knee lever right lowers my E strings a half step and my left knee lever left raises my E strings a half step. So once again on the left side of my steel here my pedal steel if I use that left knee lever and push it to the right that's going to lower my E strings both my E strings by a half step or one fret whatever you want to think of it as and when I push it to the left that raises my E strings by a half step. So that being said, um, you might want to, if that doesn't do that for your particular, um, your particular levers, you might want to find which levers on your steel does that so that you can follow along with me um, in this lesson. Um, the same thing goes with my pedals. My pedals, um, I'm using the Emin setup for my pedals, um, A, B, C pedals, where my A pedal raises my B strings a whole step and my B pedal raises my G sharp strings a half step. So just to make sure we're on the same page with our pedals and our levers. So we've got a lot to learn here. Um, go ahead and print this out. This is my diagram that I came up with for this lesson. And I'm going to zoom in in just a second to where I can really, you know, point and, and show you what all this stuff means. But uh, it's, a, it's a really unique way of, of taking the key of G, we'll be working um, in this lesson and in future lessons where we're learning pedals and levers. We're sticking with our sample key of G so that we can keep building on what we've learned. And um, as we learn different pedals and different levers, we'll keep in that same key. But everything I show you today is totally movable. You can move it in and out of different keys. So anyways, let me zoom in on this chart and I'll explain it so you, you really know what's going on here with this, this diagram. Let's get going learning volume number three of Pedal Steel Basics. Okay, so I'm zoomed in here to my chart. And real quick, I just want to go over some of the stuff on the top left portion. This may be review for some, but it's, it's good to, to make sure that you, you know this if you don't know this already. Uh, the key that we're working with is G major. But like I said before, everything I show you in this lesson can be moved uh, to all your other keys. Um, I find that focusing on one key and getting that one key down really well, especially when you're starting off, is really important. And then thinking of that key, thinking of all those chords in that key as numbers. Okay, and that's where we get here, underneath here, where it's the G major scale harmonized, right? Where we have these, these major and minor and diminished triads. And then we put numbers underneath them. And think of these chords as numbers. Um, they're basically scale degrees, uh, or degrees of the G major scale, but all your major scales can be thought of as numbers. Okay, what that means is, is your one, four, and your five chords, chords built off the first, fourth, and fifth scale degree of any major scale, those are going to be your major chords, your happy sounding chords. And notice I have uppercase Roman numerals for those chords. Okay, your two, your three, and your six chord, uh, those are going to be your minor chords, your sad sounding chords. Notice the lowercase Roman numerals for those chords. So that's really important. One, four, five, three major chords in any key that's built off your four, first, fourth, and fifth scale degree. Uh, in the key of G, it happens that's a G major, a C major, and a D major. Okay, and your two, three, and six chords, those are your minor chords. And in the key of G, that happens to be A minor is your two chord, B minor is your three chord, and E minor is your six chord. And then in any major key, your seven chord, the chord built off your seventh scale degree, is going to be a diminished chord. In the key of G, it just happens that's built off of an F sharp note, and that's going to be an F sharp diminished chord. 
So if I'm losing some of you here, um, that's just real basic music theory, but it's really important to start thinking of all your chords in numbers, especially with this first key that we're going to be working with. Okay, just a little review from what I said before. Uh, I'm using the Emin setup for my pedals and my levers. Uh, what that means is we're going to basically, in this lesson, we're just going to be working with the A and the B pedal and my left knee lever right, left knee lever left. Okay, the A pedal on my particular steel uh, raises my B strings a whole step. My B pedal raises the G sharp strings a half step. Okay, now I'm going to be putting LKR in this and in my tablature too, LKR. What LKR means is left knee lever right. That's going to lower my E strings a half step on my particular steel. You might want to try to, if, if your left knee lever right doesn't do that, you may want to try to find you know, a tuner and see which of your levers uh, lowers your E strings a half step. And just keep that in mind. Uh, my left knee lever left raises my E strings a half step. And I'm using LKL for that, left knee lever left. So LKR, left knee lever right, LK. L left knee lever left. So that's real important to understand and just apply that to your steel how it's set up. Okay let's go ahead and zoom out now and I'll show you the rest of this chart kind of how it's set up. Okay so here is my fingerboard of my steel or my steel guitar I guess the steel could be considered the bar. Okay the vertical lines up and down, notice the 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 12, those are going to be my frets. So my frets are going up and down. Okay, my horizontal lines going left to right here, like that, that's going to be my strings. Where this is my tenth string, that's my thickest, my lowest in pitch string, going all the way up to my thinnest string, my first string. The red dots indicate what strings you're going to be playing to get the certain chord grips. Now it's the same chord grips we've had in volume one and volume two, so you should know those chord grips pretty well, but basically we're doing 10, 8, and 6, uh, and 5, 4, 3. Okay, so that's just like what we've learned in the other two volumes. Now, as you use this chart, basically what you're going to find here is <clears throat> As you follow the fret down, I've got a red line. And what that red line indicates is those red, those red dots are going to be different inversions of these particular chords. And all an inversion is, is it's basically just taking a three note chord and doing different combinations of the root, the third, and the fifth of that particular chord. It might be the root is on bottom, or the third is on the bottom, or the fifth is on the bottom depending on what inversion of that chord you're doing. <clears throat> so, and underneath each chord I have the Roman numeral indicating uh, what Roman nu what uh, scale degree that's going to be built off of in the key of G major. But, as I said before, once you get these shapes down, um, all these numbers are really important because basically once you get the key of G down, you can just change keys by moving the entire shape, the entire uh, pattern here that we're learning up and down the neck depending on what key you're in. Okay so as you follow these vertical red vertical lines um, that's going to give you what chord you're going to be playing depending on what you're doing over here in this column. Okay so this column tells you what to do with either your pedals or your levers or combinations of pedals and levers and that's what we're going to go over in the lesson. Okay, we're going to take it row by row. So basically this row, that means open. That means we're not actually pushing down on any levers or pedals. And as we go from left to, the, to right, it tells you what chord you're going to be getting, depending on what fret you're on, if you grab these particular strings denoted by the, the red dots. Okay, and in this particular row, um, and we'll go over this in just a second, but I show you a cool little G minor chord. It's actually the notes work over a G minor 7 chord. But we'll go over that and we'll just go basically from left to right and I'll show you each row in this lesson. Okay, so let's 
I think that should be good. We're working, like I said before, we're working on major chords. That's capital Roman numerals denoted. That's the happy sounding chords. We're, and then I'm showing you something new here, all of these minor chords. And then also, as we move down here, um, <clears throat> we're going to be working with what's called dominant seventh chords. Um, that's basically a major triad with a flatted seventh added to it. Uh, that sounds fancy, but it's it's dominant seventh chords are used a lot in blues, and they're used a lot as transitional chords. Like say, if you wanted to move from a G to a C chord, making that G into a G7 chord uh, has a stronger pull to get to the C chord. So just kind of something um, to to start putting into your to your chord vocabulary. Dominant seventh chords are really useful and real important. So that's a lot. Um, go ahead and print that out and we're going to go over each section of this now. Let's do that now. Okay, so we finally get into some minor chords here. On, on this row where you're just pushing down on your A pedal. Okay, so I'm just raising my B strings a whole step. Now, right here on my third fret, that gives me an E minor chord. On my 8th fret, that gives me an A minor chord. On my 10th fret, B minor. And then you go up your octave, 15th. Now notice, keep in mind too, what all different kinds of chords we're getting as we're, as we're learning these. See how, if I move this all, well, so you can see the fret number there. We're on 3rd fret, and if you follow that down, we're getting all these different chords just by changing our pedals and levers here. So let's let's tackle now just pushing down our A pedal and see what all that get, gives us. So follow along with me on this row, A pedal. Starting off with our sixth chord in the key of G. Okay, so just the A pedal, third fret, and we're doing doing the same grabs, all the same string grabs for all these chords. <laughs> And I must say that I'm using that heel of my hand each time I do a different grab. And sometimes I might just pick them uh, individually. I like to put a little reverb on there. So A pedal down, here we go. E chord, E minor, sorry, E minor. the sadder sound. Okay, now, basically we're going to follow the same frets that we did for the open chord. So here's G. We pushed our A and B pedal down, that gave me a C chord, our four chord. Now if I just push my A pedal down, that's going to give me my six, my minor six chord, my E minor. Okay, all on the same fret. That's that's kind of neat. So keep in mind there, all you do, push that A pedal down, minor six chord. Now move that up to our eighth fret, what would normally be open C chord. Okay, when we push our A pedal down, that's going to give us an A minor chord. A minor in the key of G is our two chord, our minor two chord. Now if I move that up two frets, which would normally be a D chord, our five chord in the key of G. Or if we pushed our A and our B pedal down on the 10th fret, that would be a G chord. If we push just the A pedal down, that's going to give us our minor 3 chord, our B minor chord. And then obviously you could go up your octave here to your 15th fret and get that E minor 6 chord again. You can keep going. I have this piece of leather here that just kind of makes it easier for you to see the strings, but 
we could keep going. Or, and I would suggest for you to do that too. Just just follow, like I said, follow the colors of your of your fingerboard, and just match up whatever you learned down here below your 12th fret. Match it up with the colors up the octave, and that's a great way to just start memorizing your fingerboard. Okay, so that let's review over that third fret, A pedal, E minor. Move it all the way up to your eighth fret. That's going to give us our two chord, our A minor. Move that up two frets. That gives us our our three chord, our B minor. So our three minor chords: six chord, E minor, two chord, A minor and three chord B minor. And then play that up the octave too. And all I'm doing there is just doing one string at a time. And as I move up to my next string grab, I keep my, my heel of my hand on those strings so it mutes it out. Okay, let's go to our next row now. 